Welcome to Jackrabbit Journal, the weekly rundown of what is going down in South Dakota State University basketball. And we have a sit down with both head coaches coming up. Just to catch up a little bit, though, the Jackrabbit women. Talk about them first. They're 12 and 5 right now, 7 and 2 at home. Uh, a win over BYU at home that lost by two points to Wisconsin Green Bay. So some really good play, a little bit of inconsistency uh, early in the season, though, and that's how it was over the weekend in the first Summit League games of the season. The Jacks beat Denver 85-44 to in the league opener on Friday in Brookings. Rachel Walters made four threes, had 12 points for the Jacks. Kerry Young led SDSU with 21, and they win that one by 41. But then on Sunday at North Dakota State, the Jacks come out flat. The Bison come out smoking hot. Brooke Lamar went nuts for North Dakota State, 23 points in the first half. She had 30 in the game. The Jacks got down by 22 in the first 10 minutes, got it back down to 11 at halftime. Uh, Megan Watashik got going in the second half. China Stevens hit a couple of threes to trim the lead. Jacks actually had a shot to take the lead in the final 10 seconds, but could not get it down. And NDSU wins 83 to 78. And Aaron Johnston says that is way too many points to give up. We'll talk with him here in a few minutes about that and the state of the season so far for the Jackrabbit women. The men, meanwhile, have been a bit of a head scratcher as well so far this season. The Jacks are nine and seven overall, uh, five and zero at home. Although they haven't been at home all that much. Uh, the Jacks won seven in a row, including that tournament win at Utah State. That win streak, though, has been followed by four straight losses, including the first two Summit League games. Denver came out, made its first four three-point shots of the game at Denver, got the Jacks down early, held on to win that one by seven. Jake Biddle had uh, 15 for South Dakota State. And then the same story at North Dakota State on Sunday. The Bison blow out to a 21-point lead in the first half. Parks and the Jacks come back, get within one in the final minute, but cannot complete the comeback. And NDSU wins that one 72-69. So what does head coach Scott Nagy have to say about it? We'll hear from him when we return on Jack Journal. Jack Rabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Billionado.com. Scott Nagy is in his 20th season now as men's basketball coach at South Dakota State. And as another summer league season gets going, we talked with the coach this week about playing with some heart on defense is what he wants right now. The addition of uh, Wisconsin transfer George Marshall and always keeping the big picture in mind. Well, it starts with toughness. Uh, we're not, uh, you know, we just haven't been tough enough. Uh, number one, just guarding the ball. And number two, some of it is, is uh just level of concentration. We're, we're too spread out defensively. Uh, that's not where we want to be. Some of it has to do with the fact we played so many games in a row. We, we just have had no days really just to practice what we do. You know, we end up we end up focus on the other team and getting ready for the next game, uh, where we just have not had really since about the beginning of December. We've not had very many practices where we can just practice on our stuff and that uh, again that goes back to just me making decisions about practice and and we need to spend more time on just what we do and less on what other people do all right yeah as you said just talk about the schedule a little bit seven in a row on the road and the addition of George Marsh you've had George in the lineup now for seven games can you kind of assess what's changed with him where you wanted to go with him how's it been in the last seven games well, I mean, he started off good. Obviously, he was MVP of that tournament. Uh, he struggled lately shooting the basketball, and I feel like, you know, that's affected his defense a little bit. And, and he's not the only one. I mean, we're just not shooting the ball very good, and I feel like it's affecting everybody's. Uh, uh, it, when you're not playing good offense, it puts more pressure on your defense. But, but part of the deal is when you're not playing good defense, uh, you don't get good shots on the offensive end because you don't get misses, you don't get turnovers, and it doesn't allow you to get some easy stuff in transition. It's just constantly going against five people. Uh, we're not playing fast enough, uh, but we're not able to play fast enough because we're not getting enough stops. All right, and that, that leads to the slow starts. What, what else can you attribute that to, in the, especially in the last two games, getting down big early? Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't. Uh, all I know is, if you continue to do the same things, you're going to get the same results. And so, as a coaching staff, we've got to make some decisions, uh, uh, just about even offensively what we want to do. It may be personnel. There, you know, there just have we have to make some changes to light a fire under our guys. Does, does offense concern you at all right now, as being able to score with the guys you got out there? No. Or is it just all the defense? No, I don't right? have any concerns about the offense. I'm. I'm uh, very, very concerned about our defense and our effort uh, and our concentration. Uh, and, and we just need to get in practice, and that's what we need to work on. Cody Larson, 
fascinates me. It seems like he, he just kind of turns into a beast once every game. That NDSU game, he was drawing fouls right and left in that one stretch, really going to the basket hard. Can you get more of that out of him? It seems like he just flips a switch and he, he gets really good in every game at some point. Well, and he, and he you know, but it, but it needs to be for 40 minutes. Uh, and he's not the only one. It's not like, uh, but, but you know, when you're, when you're one of the top guys, then there's more focus on you, uh, more media focus, more just attention, and people notice that. But, but the, we, we could say that about a lot of our guys, that, that we're not getting 40 minutes out of them. Uh, and they're not all playing 40 minutes, but what I'm talking about is when you're on the floor, uh, we're not being consistent. Uh, players are aggressive, uh, tough, and you know when when Cody's like that, then then our whole team is better. You know the the, the guards are better because there's so much focus on him. But when he's passive, uh, uh, like he was in the first half of the NDSU game, passing the ball when when he's when he has guards guarding him, and, uh, then 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 it's it's more difficult for us to score. And so uh, we need him to be very aggressive all the time. Uh, he knows that, and he's working on it. It's not that far away, is it, from putting it all together? No, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not like falling apart and panicking, but but I, uh, uh, th there are some things that, that I want our program to be about. Uh, it's not about me, but it's about what we want our program to be about. And as a coaching staff, we need to be principled. It can't be about winning. Uh, it has to be about uh, the the things that we want to be about, and that will result in winning. I feel like yeah, you know we've even made some decisions based more on winning than we have being principled. And so, uh, you know, I, I need to change. I'm the one that needs to change, and everybody else will change. All right, but you kind of got to take the long view right now. Yeah. A lot of season left, right? Yeah, I mean, the, you know, <laughs> that that that's just the way it is. And uh, uh, these these are these are not fully. Uh, uh, developed men, they're still, they're, their brains are still developing, and um, uh, well, they are, they are, and, and they're, they're great kids, uh, uh, you know, and, and they're not the only ones. Every Everybody that plays college basketball, there's a lot of pressure on those kids. There just is, and they have to learn to deal with it, uh, and I think that, that, that our guys are, are seeing some of that. Uh, the, the, the attention, and uh, you know, particularly once conference starts, things change in terms of the attention and the intensity and uh, we, we still have even though we, we've started three juniors and two seniors we're, we're, we're still a very new team to each other still trying to figure those things out um, and I, I still think that we'll be a lot different uh, 30 days from now than we are right now but but it, it starts with coaches it just does it doesn't start with the players I have to change and everybody else will change all right and you made that Probably the toughest trip already, the Denver North Dakota State trip. Not everybody, but most everybody's still going to have to make that trip. Well, and I, I guess I don't know everybody's schedule. Uh, probably because they're not connected, so they won't right. always make the Denver yeah, North Dakota State I, trip. I think that, three or four it, teams have to do it the same yeah, way you guys it's, did. It's it's a it's a tough trip, but so what? Uh, I, I'm not interested in making excuses. I'm just not. Show up and play. Who cares? Uh, it's an opportunity. You get to play basketball. It's it, it shouldn't be drudgery, and I don't think that it is. Um, but travel's tough, but everybody has to do it. But I do think, uh, and I'm realistic, I mean, I think seven games in a row on the road uh, uh, has certainly, you know, we, we've seen the effects of it, and it'll be nice to play at home. Western Illinois, kind of a surprise. They are 2-0 to start league play. Uh, more on the matchup with the Leathernecks coming up a little bit later. Up next, though, Aaron Johnston talking about the SDSU women and the difference between losing and getting beat. Jack Rabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Billionado.com. Well, let's you. Women's head coach Aaron Johnston has averaged 24 wins a year in his first 14 seasons, and the Jacks are well on their way to 20 plus again this year. But he's a little concerned right now about all the points his team has given up. Here is the coach on that, and some thoughts on a rare loss to that school in Fargo. Yeah, weird in the sense that uh, one, one, lost one, and not that we never lose, but that in itself is disappointing. Yeah. Uh, weird in how the game played out. I think is what you're getting at. Defensively against Denver, we were excellent in that game. Okay. Uh, they're a very good team. I don't think people realize they're they're very good how good their perimeter players are. But our defense was so good that day we made it look like there was a big difference between them and us. They obviously played well offensively. And then weird in the sense we go to Fargo on Sunday. 
and uh, just didn't defend at all. We couldn't stop our shadow probably from, from scoring. We just weren't very good defensively and let them get going. I thought their interior players did a great job early in the game of scoring and getting yeah. some confidence. Then Brooke Lamar kind of took over with 23 in the first half. So we just didn't stop anybody. So from my standpoint, it was weird to see great defense and such poor defense in such a short period of time. But when a player goes berserk like Lamar was in that first half, can, do you just have to shake your head a little bit, or do you look back and think there's, we should have stopped her more than we did? You know what, I thought there was probably three shots where I thought, you know, we'll let anybody take that shot at any time. She had kind of a runner late in the yeah. half going out of bounds. She banked in two, 15, 16 right. foot. I mean, you know, so those happen, what are you going to do? But those aren't the ones that beat you. It's the three open threes that she gets in the first half where we're just standing there with a hand. Right. Once against his own, twice against man to man. It's the times where we didn't necessarily get matched up really well and didn't have the right people on the right spots and then they score on us you know so it's it's the controllable ones that get you and you're never going to be perfect but we were so far from perfect that game you know we just we just didn't give ourselves a chance but we still made a good run we're down 22 points yeah we got it down to 11 i think at halftime uh, made a good run the second half but ultimately defensively just didn't give us stops the refs were letting you guys play and i know your teams like it that way and you like it that way did it take a little too long to adjust though to what they were letting go in that first half no i don't think so i, I just thought we were passive when you're right. passive it looks like you're fumbling the ball a little bit more it looks like you're not as yeah. strong on your finishes i thought the refs called a great game um you know even macy's play at the end was more call or some kind of great phone call i thought for that situation that right. really warranted a big change so i thought the refs called a, a really good game and we just didn't play well enough to win. didn't deserve to win that game despite having the ball down one with 15 seconds to go and two pretty good shots at it to, to try and sneak out a win. Um, I think we've proven that we can be really good offensively. In our five losses we've had, we've let the team score 77 or more points. And that's just completely unacceptable. And in each of those games, we've kind of had chances to win. So I think it proves that we can score, uh, but our team has got to learn that it's gonna take both sides of the ball to be great. And uh, when we've done it this year, we have been great but just haven't done it enough. All right. And obviously no worries about being able to score points from well, your side. Yeah, I mean, you always worry about it, but you have to look at the numbers. You know, there, there's not a gut feeling. The numbers tell us that we've been pretty good offensively. We've had a couple games that haven't been as good, but we've been good enough to win almost every game we've played this year offensively, except for probably the DePaul game. Um, but okay. the other games we've lost, the defense has just kind of let us down. All right. What, what is it? I mean, you know, there's slow starts, and they you have time to think about the game and who you're playing, and you, and you just don't come out with that energy. What, what, how does that happen? I think there's a, we've used it, so this isn't a reflection of just this last loss. We've talked about it for the last couple of weeks. Don't let victory defeat you. You know, and I think sometimes our team has success. That Denver game is a great example of how well we played. We were really poor the next day in practice, getting ready for North Dakota State. Just with energy level, just with our focus, uh, we had to cover things three, four times that should have been one-time things. Uh, I just think our team gets a little bit complacent, a little bit content. Is that time of year? Is that not having classes? Is that not having routine? Is that Does that play into it? Uh, I could, but I think it's just more of our players' personality. All right. And uh, I'm not being critical of them. Uh, I'm just saying they've, they've got to be a hungrier basketball team. Personality is probably the long word. I love our team's personality. I don't need the personality to change. But we've got to be a hungrier basketball team every single day, practice games. Uh, we have to try and play at a really high level, especially on the defensive end. And I don't care if they're energetic to do that or they're quiet to do that. That doesn't matter. There's an outcome that we've got to get to, a result. I think we will, uh, but we've been up and down with it. All right. Is that a cliche good loss or is that not a thing? Do you believe in that or not? Uh, I don't. I, I don't think there's good losses, bad losses. I think there's sometimes that, that you just flat out get beat and sometimes you lose, right? Uh, losing means that there are things that you could have corrected, a lot of things, and maybe changed the outcome. Sometimes someone just plays better. Than was that, beat. which one was it Sunday? It is a loss. It was, and I, I don't mind saying that. No disrespect to North Dakota State. We just didn't play very well. Uh, we just didn't, and, and we'll see. Next time maybe we'll, we'll play them. Maybe my mind will be changed. They'll thump us again here <laughs> at our place, and then we'll have to think differently about it. But, you know, I, I just know that our team can defend a lot better. I know we can eliminate a lot of mistakes. Um, and with that, I, I just think that we've got to figure out how to do it. All right. Great thing is you get back at it and get another chance Friday, right? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly not the end of the world. You lose to a rivalry. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember exactly where the last 20 games have been, but we might be going to It's been very one-sided. And so to, to have that loss, I mean, that's, that's uh, uh, the same point you have to do in this conference race. Very few teams go through undefeated. Nobody has since we've been around. You don't like to lose early. You don't like to lose to a team that's a rival. But ultimately, they're going to have a yeah. 
But it's just, it's NDSU. That's just, that one sticks a little harder, doesn't it? No, it does to me because of the history of it. Yeah. It's the 80th game. Uh, a lot of players have played at SDSU hmm. at North Dakota State who follow that game uh, because it's important to their history too. But I just think we let our side of that down. I just think we let our past players down with that kind of effort. Um, and, and that's disappointing. That's the part that really stays with me the most. Makes it a little more interesting when they come down here. But, but that's what you need in a rivalry. At yeah, the end of the yeah. day, if rivalries are completely one-sided, that's not great either. But uh, we don't like to acknowledge that in the middle of it. Uh, but, but hopefully <laughs> we'll get it back on our side here next time. Well, the women play at Fort Wayne on Friday. They play at IUPUI on Sunday. We'll talk about that trip in a couple of minutes. But up next, our rabbit fire interview with SDSU senior Megan Stewart. Why is she still mad at former Jackrabbit Ashley Idy? Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Billionado.com. Well, the bad news is an injury has already ended the season for SDSU senior Megan Stewart. The good news is she's still an incredible artist and a kind person, and she is in the Rabbit Fire interview this week with David Brown. Why are you number three? Um, it's kind of just because a lot of people had my jersey to begin with. Um, uh, in high school, I was number 30, and ID came in and she had 30, so I was a little upset. So I just thought I'd just chop off the zero and make it easy. Were you, were you upset with Ashley that she had your number, or did you sort of know your pecking order? I knew my pecking order as, <laughs> as a freshman. <laughs> You're from Roseville, Minnesota. What's your favorite part of Roseville? Uh, probably the mall, <laughs> I would say. And they have a good theater, and it's kind of where I went to hang out a lot. And lots of good food places. Speaking of which, what is your favorite part of Brookings? And what does Brookings have that Roseville maybe doesn't? Um, I'd say my favorite part is Frost Arena. And, like, I think that's one thing that Roseville doesn't have is as much as, like, community base and how many people rally around the sports. Like, Roseville had that, but not as much as here. It's more of a college town. I'm going to tug at the heartstrings a little bit here. We know you're involved with art and art therapy for sick kids. What, what about you inspired you to do things like that? Uh, I always wanted to make a difference somehow, and I feel like using my art and trying to see, I mean, like seeing how it affects other people too, and just using it in that way is, has been really cool. Okay, we got the serious part out of the way, so now we'll go back to the funny stuff. Question five, which teammate has the most annoying laugh? <laughs> Um, oh, what do you think? I'd say <laughs> Gabby has a really, like, a big belly laugh when she gets going. So, so, it's, a, so it's really, like, guttural, like, bellows a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> you know when Gabby finds something funny. Question six, what's your favorite ice cream? Uh, chocolate. Anything chocolate. And if there's peanut butter in it, that's plus. <laughs> what is your number one pet peeve? It can be with people, things, objects. What's your number one pet peeve? Um, I'd say like loud, obnoxious eating. I can't handle it. Is it the smacking, the chewing? Well, what is it about that that just drives you up a wall? Oh, everything. It just grinds my gears. All right, question eight. What is your favorite AJ moment? Either a funny moment or a silly moment that you've witnessed from your head coach? <laughs> um, well, there might be quite a few. Uh, maybe somebody you wouldn't want me to say. Um, Do one that's family appropriate for television. <laughs> um, he got super excited when Megan Matoshik made her like last second shot at the IPFW last year, and we've never seen him do that where he just like kicked up his foot and he was super like jacked, like fist pumping and everything. That was great. So he was jacked, no pun intended. Oh yeah. <laughs> Question nine: What is your guilty pleasure? Whether it's food, a bad song, what's your what's your guilty pleasure? Reese's. The cups, Reese's pieces, Reese's cups. You gotta be specific here. Oh, Reese's cups probably. All right, and then the last question. This one might offend some teammates, but who would win a horse contest between everyone on the women's team? Um, I'd probably say Rachel. She's got a shot. Wouldn't even pick yourself. You you sort of know know that Rachel could probably hit it from anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> All right, easy enough. Megan Stewart, you're off the hot seat. All right, thanks. Well, up next, both teams need to get it going early in their games this week. Both teams are on the road. We'll take a peek at the opponents when we come back.
Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Billionado.com. Well, Jackrabbit men finally get a home game on Wednesday night against uh, Western Illinois, playing as we speak. As a matter of fact, the Leathernecks have been a little bit of a surprise. They're off to a 2-0 start. They beat Fort Wayne and Omaha to start league play. The Jacks play at Omaha on Saturday afternoon. We'll have that game live on Midco Sports Network at 4.30. The Mavericks lead the league in scoring right now at 79 points a game. They have a good big man in Mike Rostampour who's going to try to muscle up against Cody Larson. That'll be fun. Omaha uh, won at South Dakota in their league opener, but then lost by two at Western Illinois, so the Mavs are playing well right now. The Jackrabbit women play at Fort Wayne on Friday. The Mastodons have Haley Seibert, who is third in the league in scoring right now. The Jacks, though, won by 11 last year in Fort Wayne. The only league loss for the Jackrabbit women last year, remember, was at IUPUI, and the Jacks play there on Sunday. The Jags are the only team in the league that does not have a single player averaging more than 10 points a game right now. They have 10 players between 3.6 and 9.6 points a game, but nobody in double figures for the IEPUI women right now. One football note before we go. Congratulations to SDSU running back Zach Zenner, who has been invited to the NFL Combine coming up in Indianapolis in mid-February. It will basically be a four-day job interview in front of the scouts and executives and coaches from all of the NFL teams. Zenner put together three straight 2,000-yard seasons at SDSU and should at least get a free agent shot to make it at the pro level. We wish him well. Check us out on YouTube and Twitter. We'll see you next week on Jackrabbit Journal.